leave them. I mean, does Deke suddenly just have this, like, very aggressive draft? Um, I mean, I guess Zeth is still the real carry, even though he's from... I mean... I just think it's too greedy from Meteor. I don't I don't think they can play this slowly. Like all Mystique really needs to do is just make sure this death profit doesn't have free time. Like make sure she wastes her first uh, um, one or two eight seasons and I don't really think Meteor can come into the game. Like their their draft is just way too they need way too much of the map, which just don't give them any much. So uh, I'm going Mystique. Flick very quick. I mean, I think I'll I'll still have to go with Mystique. I did say something about sniper, but I'm gonna all right, we're doubling down again. Let's go, Fluke. We can't be wrong twice in a row. Let's throw it over to Dan Ogadaries for game number three, the deciding matchup between Prepare two Prepare for this. battle. You lads and Oracle love. We'll see if they can't be wrong twice in a row, or the Oracle himself. We still haven't... Yeah, you're uh, recalling for the, the sniper early in the draft. Do we feel like Mystique have enough answers to address this mid lane sniper? Uh... I can see why they might. My big issue is if Mystique try and fight before the BKB comes out on the primal piece, because I think the slain is actually going to be fairly decent for Meteor, right? Like, you've got the glimpse, and just really like to level up the glimpse these days, not just to have that heavy reduction on the cooldown. It's actually just about uh, as, fish, as efficient in terms of damage and mana usage compared to the Thunderstrike. It means that you don't need to use as many mangoes and you just go the trading build this is almost identical actually to the, the item build that um a lot of the pros are using and i've had a lot of success personally in my pubs as well so i actually quite like um meteor gaming's draft this time around i feel like every time that the primal beast is trying to use all of his magic damage to be able to take out the high armor naga siren she's going to be able to a run away because she's very quickly or b he's just going to get close back and it's not going to have much of an effect this. So I actually don't hate Meteor stuff. Begins. What, what do you reckon? Um, it does seem like Braid and cover each other pretty nicely. I, I think for Dai, you're going to have a lot of emphasis on trying to get on top of the sniper and you have the Rikita play in front of him for kind of to cut out the Naga illusion to help keep Wade in a good position. If you ever get onto the Naga, you can use Song. So if you get, ever get onto the sniper, you can use Song to reposition. And then once Dai kind of heavily commit, all of a sudden you're in a tricky spot. But I think that's kind of the nice thing that Radiant are able to play around with. But I, I'm not too concerned about the Naga's illusions in particular inside the fight. Because that's where the Primal Beast is able to address it. I really think this week is just the Dyer's biggest counter to the Disruptor now with that Aghanim Shard. I don't think they have a lineup where they can look to play really aggressive and play off the back of glimpses instead. Even with the uh, Naga Illusions, do you think they could like be the thing to use for Vision? Try and catch out the Rook, lips him back, take him out, and then take the play? I don't think the Rubik should ever be in a position where you get glimpsed and get brought down to Saw. Um, maybe that's where you song to get on top of. Look, they've got a Primal Beast, Night Stalker, and a Sven that can petition in front of him. And you're going to have Vision of X with the Dark with dark Ascension as well. I really don't think Rubik should be caught out of position in a game like this. Probably shouldn't, to be honest. And I mean, again, imagine if Rubik's able to steal Glimpse, right? All of the cast range on Glimpse plus a Night Stalker. It's kind of nutty that you're actually the one that people find. Um, I still kind of want to put it up there and just think we're gonna be your and take this. I think they've got the avenues. I don't think this is a massive aircraft either way, like it was in games number one. So the one interesting thing that we do have is this Night Stalker carry, something that we've really only seen put in the carry role against some like Helm of the Overlord hero, where you get a, a really fast way to uh, address that thanks to the Agony Shot. So we feel is like the reasoning for them to give the carry, uh, sorry, the Night Stalker and carry role. Uh, to be honest, I think we just needed something else that was able to get in onto the back lines, and that was what they felt. With it. It's not like it's an amazing lane against the death, but a double melee lane as well. So Ricky's going to be able to do a good enough job trading uh, things with you. Or armor that Ricky's got to play with. You can see he's itemized for the orb of venom, just because he knows these and have the extra mobility versus almost every single hero. This time we actually saw the nice sort of one. Like, it won't play it for SG when you care. Uh, the only one I can remember is when Martu played it at TI, but I'm sure this, that that's the only one I've seen recently. I'm sure there has mm -hmm. been some others, though. So. 
He actually ended up going for the Thunderstrike first instead of the Glimpse, but probably for, uh, uh mm -hmm. there wasn't any super deep dives coming through from the final beast. A gift from the Tempest of Battle! Sack off and try and push the wave towards the back towards his tower, so it's a lot harder to go for his gank attempts. I think we get that in mind. This is uh, the disruptor into the primal beast. It's also something that a lot of the teams favored in the last chance qualifiers. Oh, yeah, speaking about the NJ. Look for the long charge, but this glimpse. See you later, buddy. Right, there you go. That's exactly kind of what we saw again at the last qualifiers. It was really the, the Eastern European team that brought us to the forefront. So Liquid looked to utilize it a lot in that last game to qualify to the group stages. But yeah, with like the disruptor, the clockwork, so yeah, TZ is going to be able to play against NJ. Prioritize killing these uh, illusions as well. This early on, Monaga gets too much in the form of stats. Your heavy right click damage on the middle, but it still does a lot to be able to take care of it. You just get a bit of extra gold in the lane. If you're needing to expect to trample for it, go for another dive again. Glimpse just completely negates it. The lane goes all the better. I was actually running a little bit on mana. Mangoed up. A QQ. It's the amount of times that he looked to go for these gank attempts. A bit of aggression onto the, the Naga though, just trying to prevent being able to get as much farm as possible. Not doing a, a good job at that, at least in that garden, the opposite lane zone. Tempting to get aggressive onto the sniper as well, but the shrapnel would be that deterrent, so. He's going to be okay. We've been trying to bring Ricky over as well. He still gets scouted out with the Observe Ward, so he's going to put a reposition accordingly. I wonder if you can even consider he's holding on to the third point here on the Disruptor. I wonder if he's considering just using the Kinetic Field in case they go for a dive underneath the tower and not using the Glimpse and just trying to get the tower damage to prepare the Primal for them. That could be a great way to reposition out to the left or the right. Maybe even have the, the Ricky TP. Someone else. Right now, though, they're farm all underneath his tower, and he's making sure to keep this wave in a real dangerous spot as well. So, Radiant not too much that he can do about it, but terrible Cobalt Soldier Camp. Uh, this lane is not going to be fixed too much either. Each creep wave as well. So, those uh, neutrals are going to go fall down pretty damn quickly as DQQ actually makes the rotation back, realizing that. Ray is not in the position where he's going to be dying in time soon. Ray making the patient through. They want to try and get this early kill onto the sniper. Right way to enable zone to start what Shadow Fiends need in that snowballing start where you just amp up the damage and go from there. I think Radiant's Ward just expired as well, so I believe they're too aware of this. And honestly, with the position of the lanes, it's not going to be easy for them to read it. Got. Top lane's gonna, gonna be equal, they've got no vision here. You're probably anticipating the wave's gonna get pulled as well, so maybe expecting a support to be there. Bottom's directly underneath the cap, so he doesn't need his support for, for the next little bit of time, so... It could just be sacking, for example. Yeah, exactly. Like, there, there, there's many things that DQQ could be doing at this time. Could be going to get some, like, super deep wards up, knowing that Naga Sirens tend to like to go back to the jungle, setting up for future gaps in, you know, around the 10... Yeah, both these mid laners are going to be very vulnerable to these rotations. We saw the Ricky attempted, so if a die that actually makes that first successful rotation, then all of a sudden this lane just ball out of control, or, or really just it could just help the supports get a little bit more levels to make it even a little bit more gold. Say if Ruby gets uh, boots in an early stage, or even Ray as well, that would just make it that much easier to be able to wrap behind the sniper and get that done to allow the Shadow Fiend to get the razors. So. You've got to be really cautious to not feed away this kill. We'll, we'll see if YRG is able to read it. I mean, this just comes down to like played experience. Sometimes you play against these guys in your pubs. How, how habit formed are they? Where they're like the exact same thing every single time. And how adaptable do you think they are based on what we saw in games one and two? There was that many mid rotations in those first two games. So maybe they'll be able to catch the sniper off guard. Really, the only rotations we saw was trying to get the power runes. It wasn't like this is not even up the timing to rotate for the power runes. It's usually you're supposed to move it like 
the the 45 second mark so you, they are this move is them going for the kill you've got great positioning with the cliff and maybe even they're considering like all right but potential wards expire and i mean that's exactly what happened like yrg just had a ward mid it just expired so maybe they're like all right if we move a little bit earlier before the room planning he might not have a ward set up already by support to help protect him might kind of know what's going because if you have a look at him, like he's mid cast shrapnel right now, it's level three. So that gonna do a good job of pushing the lane out. Obviously, you kind of want to do that against the Shadow King because he's just raising the wave back in your favor. But he might just say, look, I want to make sure that I'm not going to get dived underneath the tower with creeps uh, assisting it. So let's just push the wave out now and then back off. Question of where does he back off to though? Uh, wanting to have a bit more information as to where these supports We feel like the supports this game are really the playmakers. Are there any calls we need to look to? Not just, you know, through the first 10 minutes, maybe even like the first 15 minutes to be the ones like making plays across the map and getting aggressive. Question, right? Like, it's not... I think going into the late game, there's not like a massive favor for our team. You've got Naga and Sniper on one team, both incredibly strong. But then you've also got a, a Primal Beast who's able to deal with the illusion incredibly well. You've got a Night Stalker who's going to be an absolute terror for the back lines and taking out a big portion of the team fight in the form of the Disruptor. And then Shadow Feeds, decent right picking beast in his own right. So I think in terms of the early gameplay, it's not necessarily about making the plays happen, it's just preventing your cause from dying. Obviously, both teams favor their drafts. They wouldn't have drafted them if they didn't, right? So I think they both feel like they've got the capability to go into the late game. So we expect maybe a bit more of a, a slower paced game three sure. here to get both sides just, you know, get stable, get their foot and find that farm. Does it mean it's going to be a lot of the back of like this kind of ward formation around the river just to scout out if that enemy team is kind of crossing into the, enemy, into the opposition's half? Yeah, crossing into the enemy's half or even just what power rune is available, right? Because that can be the thing that keeps the game open. Uh, a shadow. Fiend with haste, for example, is super capable of killing a Naga Siren. We'll see what ends up happening there. I mean, been one, sorry, zero kills in his five and a half minute. Could be one. Sniper, but we will have to wait and see. With the uh, with the patch on the horizon, are you are. Uh, let's uh, let's do some crazy theory crafting here. Theory crafting. We haven't seen changes to the power rooms in, in quite some time, and even a new one added as well. Oh, God, he's come back. Oh, no. Maybe we like, we don't want to hear us talk about yeah, <laughs> <we> <laughs> how stupid the theory's coming through. I'll, I'll have a think about it. We, we've got the game sure. to play right now, but I'll have a think about what extra room we could be. How creative you can be. YRG is going to be. In the mind, he needs to keep his life, and it, well, it looks like that's not the case. Q can telekinesis is back over to his own grasping hands. It's spreading out. Come here, thank you, brother. Hey, look, I made the rotation all the way down from top. You should reward me for making that play. I was, I was definitely needed. He's gonna get his boots as well if you want to. Sitting very happy in terms of reach in wards. Check that a power rune as well. With his body not putting down any kind of uh, observer ward for me. Haste! That's really good lane positioning though, right? Primal is coming under the tower, Night Stalker as well. That might be some trouble. I think Phil will forget that shrapnel damage showing, but uh, just do the easy thing and TP out. She doesn't look like Rubik has that capability, but won't even matter. All the stick charges to play with and no damage for raiding. Team to the so. chase. Still though, you have to say that the Seek are fairly happy with how that one's turned out. They might even be looking at the, with the, uh, the death that the trap was doing. It's been points into it, so they might choose to stack build up inside of the triangle. Hasn't been just yet. Uh, good to scout out that sort of thing when you've got heroes like a Shadow Fiend or a Primal Beast that are very quickly able to deal them away. YRGs can be able to read this again. Sitting off for the little side. It's going to be DQQ that actually backs off it. You can see we try and make some stacks. Yeah, he didn't walk perfectly inside Dyer's the fog of war, so that has been killed. Been walking around probably on a uh, career kill mission. He got one on the way back towards his lane. 
Trouble. Assassinate from downtown to help out with the damage, but they're gonna be cautious how long they want to take the fight. It's done. It's now rocked up. Try and get the raises going, but the sounds can prevent that follow up damage as Marco would just escape. Break through to the blink. Find the distance to get out. Six armor. Yeah, it's really coming in handy there. Doesn't stop them from uh, taking the stack that had been built up for the Shadow Fiend, but of course, it's really important to just try and take that. Uh, any potential away from to be able to snowball more than he naturally will probably start to build up a few stacks for the SF just so that he keep all up. You know, a lot of attention's been put around the mid lane against the sniper and the shadow fiend, which means all the calls in the side lanes have had a, a pretty free time. Uh, from Night Stalker that probably isn't completely expected. Funny thing though, this is a deep dive if they were to go for it. A good map awareness as well. They're probably saying, well, where the hell is Night Stalker right now? Not the greatest jungler. I'm not gonna see it. Just... DP? Nope. Pushing by Marp. The DP is that one person I, I want to activate it out of Radiant. With that effort, can definitely look to open up the map. Some pressure to the target. How can they do that here for me, or? You get nothing. To enable the DP? Uh, honestly, they probably can't. <laughs> Maybe it's gonna be on the back of uh the dp get it dived upon uh there's so many points all four actually so but it's survivable if she does get gone on and then it's just a matter of making a tp happen maybe they back off and then you use the glimpse back to be able to get a kill perhaps use that to convert into a tower so i think Malice is probably going to get on his own for a majority of his time up here so with all that free space that he is getting is i think i have a great start up the net worth but Casualty of war with this smoke. They're going to be bringing two members. And that smoke potty is going to be shadow feeding, so. Oh, they require out the SF damage to be able to secure the kill. Mop with the Night Talker Dark. Essentially, they'll easily scout him out walking into the free line. It's going to be no escape across the map, though. It will be an evasion party inside dies on junk. They're not going to have the game for the moment to kill EQ. It's now with the pulverize from NJ. Jules off TZ. Can they get it? One more right kick gets to kill anyway, but it really doesn't matter. NJ's rotation with that pulverize secures it. A big kill onto the sniper, and these early game movements from Team Steak have been on point. It was a very deep movement Radiance from the start. Attack. It has to be said, especially considering you did nothing to control that uh, high ground cliff wall. So every little bit of his movement was completely scattered out. But the pass on is you've still got the net worth lead on the back of the Naga sign being basically uncontested. So see your game even to, to play off the comfort of knowing that. He scattered out somewhat by Rain. Where could even just pick up all around. Or that uh, it's not getting any of his arm completely for free, even soaking up the experience can do quite a lot against the Naga Siren, who most of your muskets come off the back of your elephants, so you can't oftentimes fall behind. This is how they're going to look to try and unlock the Death Prophet. Oh, they saw the Oxen? Maybe this might want to trust me. This one, they're going to need to bring a bit more numbers to make this attempt. They really want to keep that Siege Creep alive, not making the same mistake they made in game number one. It's going to be the first one to beat in. Set up for NJ. A glimpse to Primal Beast back, but he's already done his job. Hold Classic just into place. I'm just going to try and chop to the rip, but the damage just isn't there at the moment. Molasses can stand strong. A big victory for Radiant. Have wasted up extra duration, so let's see if they're still going to be able to get the T1 tower. I mean, that's the dream for a sniper, right? You just sat back has been deep killed. away from a long range and very happy to do so. It means that you don't die just yet on the death prophet. You should probably do take the T1 tower. Onto the FF. Dyer's middle tower. Three available, so if they wanted to go for a dive, they could. Dyer's but you know that the pulverize still attack. wasn't used and they don't quite yet have that uh, level 6 on the disruptor, so pretty happy. Just get a tower for free with Naga firing the whole while. And looking at the Naga even more, it definitely feels like her illusion in particular with pushing out side lanes is, is I, under I attack. actually don't think something that Dyer can address. Your, your two supports definitely cannot. Your final beast can, but uh, look at that. It was mobile. Like, it's also got a pretty big cooldown in 16. You can't really use it to, to get across the map easily. Maybe it's a little bit there, but 
And if this is a Night Soul Call, I mean, even if you went into the Agon of Scepter, which for that only reason Bounty. to help me some of the illusions, it's 4200 gold, and I don't even think it'd be enough damage to do it. So we, we spoke a lot about, like, the... Sorry, TZ was doing a clever play with his illusion, just seeing if uh, the full beast would pulverize it. Sorry, what do you say? Oh, there's a quick giant that's gonna try and hit the big smoke on three. The target is the Naga inside the triangle. So it's not gonna be an easy way for them to start the fight. They'll need to pop the Dark Ascension. He might just stop instantly, but oh, he doesn't have a skill point though. Dyer's the daytime smoke pops in. Oh, oh, an awkward smoke for Dyer. And now look what they're getting out of the map. Wind completely shoved in, Molasses, he's free farming bottom. They're getting a lot out of the other lanes, and they might even look to try and take this team fight. PQ, maybe glimpse back, Static Storm even lay it down as well, just to help secure the kill onto the Rubik. TZ, they're even messing around. Nemo Naga's even caught up to Rage, and they're ready to cancel the TP, and that, that killed it. Just getting hit the level 10, but they're putting into the north, but a long cooldown, but nonetheless. Well, the they might have found one of these deep observer wards as well, which again, I don't think they're going to be fine for any smokes anytime soon. One B, or you know, you put an Argus and you put who to be uh, didn't have the greatest landing stage, obviously, given up that first blood, and he's sitting at the bottom of the net for his team. But you can see that he's not really gone that full bombing, creeping route, you know, it's, it's more about keeping the lynch, it's more about protecting the Nargus farm. Uh, uh... Dark Ascension used inside the river, but... Just keep oh, seeing away! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. under attack. What use before the Dark Ascension? Dyer's under attack. I... He, 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 no, no, he used the Dark Ascension, then got Quinn's just before he was ever getting named for the Quinn's field. Okay. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower has fallen. So I was like, oh, he didn't get silence before he got the glimpse off, but... Fast thing is coming through, I suppose. Ward inside of the Radiant Triangle. Radiant's bottom Ancient tower Campier, is under attack. Just out of range of the Sentry Ward. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, are they? Well, they're going to smoke to try and test this. I do fast. Attention over towards the Ricky. We're not going to be able to break them down. Now, Molasses can look to enter the fight. The back of his exit is blocked. He might not be strong enough to win. His NJ just goes straight towards its knife and pummeling him to the ground. It set up for Doran and the Night Walker kept the damage going. The Naka was able to wrap on the back on and get to the revenge, but it wasn't enough to turn the team fight into their fanny bomb. Middle tower is under the attack. For more, could be there to disrupt the bruise this last target. Fill the hold the back. The all she wrote, but in the end, a three for two, favoring Mystique. Yeah. Without um, Mystique, he's keeping the sniper from the bin, preventing him. But he knows he's one of the main pirates, right? It's a cheeky little flip off onto the stage, letting him know what the situation is. Shouldn't be. Yeah. Like good situation. Back has got boy. Help me! <laughs> Sirs, please! Not a chance. You're a boy, but my brother. We're gonna be done with that. Uh, they're gonna make amends for it. They're ready to go, though. Probably might have just got a glimpse of DQQ. We'll get confirmation of their positioning. Even block the stack. Yeah. I'm like, why are you not getting super free, right? The only reason you died that time is because Primal is trampling on top of him. You've got yeah, the raise damage coming through off the back of the slows, and he just wants to be KB. He wants to make himself not a free kill on this. So his Naga's going to carry this game if it gets to the later stage. Right now, he just needs to make sure that he's not feeding too much the old away while still being able to push out things. And doing that with the trip. I, I quite like how he's doing this game. Oh, no. <laughs> Too late to use the tricks of the trick to, to dodge the Sven stun, so we'll end up going down that bottom lane though. The Night Stalker, no, it's not to the sniper. Glimps will come out the last second. Can he get the void off? That's oh, still cool there. Great glimps from TD. Probably will cost his own life, but that is a worthwhile sacrifice for the sport. Very, very nicely done. Where's the tip? That's where you Dyer's need the tip cover through from your teammate. You know, you did a very nice job. And this is also the... Uh, wrong. No, my bad. So it's not a really big window for them to be able to make a lot of stuff happen, maybe get a bit of progress with their farm, but... 
time that you're able to just hide out of the dark extension without Dyer's going down to big win for is your under team. Attack. Multiple dark extensions we've seen used now to no avail, and this is a orchid picked up already for the night. Sorry, Mantle Orchid, top of the net worth. Who is it? Target going to be inside the team fights here for the night. Who does he want to be prioritizing with this silence now? Honestly, Mantle wouldn't be the worst just because part of his damage output is that magic, just to be able to get off slow as well from the upper ball. So, I think the news of that, I would have said the SF, but he just picked up the DKB. Radiance um, Middle Tower is under attack. Just, yeah, coming out for the rooming. So, Good go for the Aetherlands first, feeling like maybe they need to get a little bit more active, get a few more kills on the board, but you definitely want to see that being the next item. Lane, they're setting up on the match look up, but Iron's River is starting to make way bottom, so Rikima boys will think twice about this. It's not an easy kill. The carry 1800 health with the arm activated. Oh. He's very careful not to just reveal attack. himself completely on the left. I'm trying to nuke these waves down as well. He has the. Uh, oh. 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 Sleeping dot. Into the X committed. Oh, he he the Radiant oh. Middle Tower is under oh. attack. Oh. Just luck. He TP to the outpost, six seconds to the underneath Dyer's his tier one tower, tower, and that's exactly where Mystique were making that rotation. Looks at Song. Yeah, 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 Scouting shenanigans and, and always just having that being utilized as roaming ward to see wherever Mystique are playing. There are a lot of deep wards again. The Nagasar and Illusions doing a lot of that job as well on the top side. Uh, about snipers, shrapnel, it's, it's, it's that ghost push, right? Don't show yourself in the lane. Just throw an ability and then get out to the next field where you've actually got some decent vision. So. Dyer's top oh, tower is under really attack. I like the way that they've dressed this game. It feels like they're all on the same page in terms of their overall macro strategy. Has to be said as well, it's definitely a different sort of style here for, for Mystique. We're seeing them play a lot off the back of this net, just profiting gate one and game two, having this kind of fox tempo lineup. And for this game three in particular, it's been very slow for them. 20 minutes in, nine kills at least, but they haven't really been once making that aggressive maneuver into right inside of the map. They're just happy with getting their farm. Personally, if you can't hit their timing because Meteor, and they feel like they're ready to go. Molasses just charging up into the triangle, trying to protect that power room, but in your region, nothing too crazy. Might feel like the red good, but I really hope. Marv Lube in combination with Jamar and they're gonna need TP's coming out pretty goddamn fast, but it might be too late. Can they turn it back around, however? NJ Kesman, Naga can look to use the song. The rest of the points are actually starting to make their way to top. Meteor and said they want to take the team fight. She's the one that's in trouble. The trample will bring her down at the last second. Now, NK, he's looking for more, but he's got to double back. Hesitant to the rest of the team. They're coming over. Static Storm to lock him in. Molasses is showing up, and all of media will be rewarded with getting the kill onto NK. Beautifully I done. Coming to the fast enough to help take that team fight. Then they were all in this page, and I was a little worried at that point because I was like, he's, he's song, he's standing next to a lot of these high damage heroes. Where are the boys? They've been prioritized with trying to take out the Shadow Fiend. He was able to get the BK TP off back to base and, and stop happening uh, the Siren and the rest of his team. But, well, they still are able to get a three for one hero trade on Meteor. So even though your Naga Siren ends up dying, spends a lot of time off the map, you still win out on the trade. You get a BK be popped get three kills, you're still satisfied. Uh, I... Radiant on Ruby Thorn, the blink next item. I like it. I mean, we, we've we seen greatness that Shard provides, right? And even little things like, this. for example, you're able to steal some of the Siren somehow, because you've got the Aether Lens, if possible, and the Ring of Vizier. If you install Song, that's a bunch of HP back for the rest of your team, if you're able to get that one on. So, it just everything up, not just the Static Storm, Nile. 
denial potential sleeping dart to allow the rest of the team to close the distance the potential to be able to stop the narca siren from just locking down one person and, and being able to blow them up i, I think the shards would provide them a, a whole lot of defensive and i talk it that they that they're really quite fight i'm just trying to think what the beat the blink is actually looking to do you know like what what, are the, what is the what's it in there you're gonna have to be KB soon on the night store. Shadowfiend's got a BKB, he's gonna be forced to use it. You know, a BKB is a way to run away instead of taking a team fight to yeah. Seven seconds here for zone. Okay, our top almost gone as well. I feel like both teams are just waiting for these bees to come out. YRG's got his. Uh, Death Prop Bird actually went away from it. She was trying to build into it, but instead opting for the uh, Heaven Talbot instead. You don't hate it. I mean, it, it, with these BKBs being expended, the value of that one just goes up more and more. Ah, oh, completed. It is. Yep. Oh god, she's so far. <laughs> oh, she's actually so far. What can you do? Can and you all do the physical just... damage as well, right? Like, how are you going to kill the real Narc Siren with the heart, the the Ricky Sleeper as well, just provide a little pet miss chant, the smoke screen, and go into a bottom fight. Through the way stop them. Oh, I sent you just for me to the shop, though. You have to kill, but... I, I, I don't know if that's a worthwhile kill to expend your Dark Ascension. Definitely not. I'm sure they were hoping to Radiance be able to claim something tower, else, maybe thinking attack. that Rubik might have been able to steal Dyer's something. They'll tower. be able to get into one tower at least. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Fast five spin. Get that tower. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Steal, steal, steal. Uh, <laughs> what's queued up? I don't hate it. He's like, right, you know, Soul Chris, it's gonna help you. Really did want to get that back speed going. I need the net worth, I need the gold. We were just speaking about the Naga and kind of like the things that they might have. We end it if you see the item I have pushing shields and set so definitely gonna help out in fights against just a bunch of like out of fights. <laughs> good luck dealing with him, and good luck keeping him playing with Brady, having an ages advantage because. It will be a little bit late to contest this, you're going to stand more than one Still going to give it over the Naga. I feel like he's going to play a little more aggressively. Another sleeping dive enough to the rest of Dyer and Levi. They're going to push the Zerg. Turn the right shot, direct him straight off the death prop before slam it down to the ground and get an easy kill as a result of this. But they're cautious though. Salt does get stolen, so they can counter initiate if Radiant wanted to out of the back of this song and that won't be the case. So you just defensively free position. That's happened that big door on flashes death buff. I didn't use it to be able to stay continue, which is a little surprise about, you Radiant know, you just uh, feel like not nah, could have definitely looked for himself. You know, also the blinds wasn't able to get the green buff, wasn't able to get any spirit buff off as well. It's certainly the it's, uh, the DP survives to get to the kind of pieces. Again, they kind of don't lose anything massive, but... Oh, 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 no. Man. Stop, let's talk, because that song would have been so nice to use in this next team fight. Might be the case of, like, well, you still on smoke screen. But, uh, they feel like without the exorcism, they don't feel like they can pick a team fight just... But I'm not so sure. Uh, yes, I have to join in onto this fight. We're not quite at level 18. Ray is forced to have that extra level in the Requiem, but right now, mm, just putting himself on the front lines, trying to take away as much of that map as he can. He's not content with just farming the top side. He wants bottom, he wants top, he wants mid, he wants your entire map. You don't get it. This is do with almost butterfly completed. The Shadow Fiend is have some difficulties with Dyer's getting that right. Damage coming under attack. 
Be careful about using the glyph as well, right? Like, you've already lost the two tower top. And they have the refresh on the that ends up going down. So, yeah, basically, given this one for free, IRG with a BKB, bottom tower he isn't an easy kill anymore. Immediately go for the smoke afterwards. Dyer's bottom tower the is under attack. How many vision medians top tower is on top under attack? Cool. I wonder we're able to scout at the moment. They might bypass zone, however. They just want to get themselves set up with the Nagas and pushing the Dyer's tower and play behind it. Is under attack. Yeah, I think it's too obvious. Just doing normal Nagas siren things. They know they were playing around that region. They're using the creeps to push it in. Sure that the tower gets hit a few times. They were in position to potentially catch the SF. He chose to defend. Yeah, too. I'm not dating this huge. You can see. God. The heavy commute. Looks like the conclusion. Nice talk. He's got to take out that uh, Ricky or the Disruptor. He's got the beak, and he's got the dust. Dyer's uh, as tower well. Provide him with survivability and then. I feel like they're not Dyer's just ready to fight yet. Maybe they're just saying, look, I need BKB. I need to get to him immediately. My BKB is already one second down. Can't waste time. All the way. Wanted to wait out the Aegis timer as well. Really feels to me Dyer's like that's the last chance. But if Can best can top top tower is under oh. attack. Oh. 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 Is under attack. Oh. I should live now. Oh. 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 as well. And make sure it doesn't have to pull this out the DK baby. You see, now he's just got zero kits in the world. I know we have to use it to. Defensively, it's a kinetic field will lock it into place, but that means it's a lot more difficult for the Night so can it get those four kills by killing one and kill two. Eyes out the, the blink dagger, so he still wants to try and do it. Positioning of TZ, he is going to be the main target. Dire structure. They're fighting to this. This is not an easy team fight that they Dagger on the front. Pops. You really wanted to run into this. Oh, it's like the hell deep for the exorcism to spiral the all day. OJ charged into the middle. The ball to the other side, but they're only just tickling her. NJ's in trouble. The fancy twist the BKB. Now they can look to turn. With the help of the polarizer, so only starting to get the right damage going. I thought he just took the first slide. Signal is secure. Now they do all things go in on the It's nice. So good. Trying to come. Now they can move over the ball in at the time. This Ward's getting controlled, it gives him an opening to try and deal with the carry. But he's getting stared at the moment. Naga looks to turn up into the shadow being the death of the wind. Not enough. Kill the Brady men. This is not so good. I can turn it back around. Find the opening. Jump into the middle. Only gets his T's Evo. They didn't need more out of it. Yeah, and now it's daytime. Now you don't have Dark Ascension and no support. So, do, yeah, no support. Fight back. Dyer's what can you do against back. this? Shadow Fiend, even attack. once he comes back, no BKP, no Requiem, no Soul Gear to play around with. I wouldn't be surprised if they just didn't leave Mystique's base. Even the respawn. They it's not going to be easy to contest this. Or he can glimpse him back. He's easy to force off the close distance. Sure, Clint's clip doesn't matter. Backs down. Instant use to the buyback. Dyer's top tower. I don't think they're going to be able to protect the second set as well. Good. Top are under attack. Seth still is just sitting at the twelve all stolen. They're going to AJ. Put it out. All the primal base into place is to hit them to the shrubs retreat. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. This will come in handy. Big wave top as well. They might be tempted to go back to that. Anyone close to the big one? I mean, sniper again. Since the very beginning of the game, like he's died three times, but certainly hasn't become that that potential uh, eating hero that we were yep. hoping that he was, right? And ever since then, he's just been slowly creeping up in farm, went from last of the course to third place. Now the Shadow Blade, so we've actually got damage on the other a little bit of team fight control. I think they see the Kari is flying past the, the triangle with their own yeah. so... Back up. Oh. See, if they want to stick around, maybe to get the damage in the T2 tower, they've got a Kree wave getting pushed in, surely. 
Won't get anything out of the smoke. So we'll ward place down, getting a little bit of farm inside Radiant's jungle. It does have to be said that even a full set of barracks and the melee barracks was clean hot. It's only 6,000 net worth. Radiant's bottom tower is Can under I attack. Some of the copium that you've got. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, then you can pot. Maybe with this MKB, that copium could be a little bit more realistic. But this smoke oh, okay. could just be. And DD is like the, the one chance that they've got. It could even go on to question, right? Like, you need to have everything in perfect harmony. Oh, you've got to hope that they don't. Aren't the ones oh, to start the fight. Big. He gets charge on four, but they're doing such a good job to control the Night Stalker. Another song will give them an opportunity to reset, but the rest of the team are backing off. Nago finds the opening for the Static Storm on two, but it's both the support that they're going to bring up your bring down. And what to just run on Dino as they're getting controlled though. Primal Beat, just activate his BKB and TPR. And the rest of the team back their heads and run away in shame. It's, it's another wasted ultimate from the nice Night Stalker. Now Radiant, good. they can look to pillage the last set of Arix down bottom. Oh, exorcism as well, then. Yeah, I'm not sure about the... Uh, oh, Axis pop the BKB. Yeah. Can they get anything out of the combo with the Requiem? Oh, 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 that's... Dyer's what can you do now? BKB's on corner, they'll just come not him. Oh, Shut it down out for the count. No buyback for him and Dyer's with that death, it's looking like it's gonna be Meteor's Dyer's bottom threes of game. Dyer's bottom barracks. I mean it's looking really strong even behind the Night Stalker. The whole has been perfectly on point, but he even went to kill onto the top of it after the static storm had already been used. I mean that's the big thing that you're worried about in a lot of these teams. I have to like there's really not too much that they can do. Mega Cross picked up. Not even a potential to put them back in the cycle. Dyer's Ancients is under attack. Oh, prayer, but the Torrent's just falling to creeps in. They're even going to call it quits before making that last attempt. So we're going to get to him if we that for their first series of Division 2. It is indeed. He goes out. The Meteor was able to kill the dinosaur. And once again, Fluke and Nomad completely incorrect with their prediction coming through. As uh, you and I, we, uh, we take the chocolates once again. But uh, no, it was a fantastic Naga Siren pick. Uh, I really